Ready in three, two, one, hack. Cockruns, welcome to the cockpit of the Just Flight Hawk T1 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. I am Chris and I'm going to be flying the Platinum Jubilee Flypath and I'm going to be working to a time over Buckingham Palace of one o'clock. This is a good time to pause it now just so that I can talk through some of the planning aspects because that'll make everything else a little bit clearer as we talk it through. So here is my plan using a little nav map to fly from Norwich down past uh, Buckingham Palace and on towards Southampton. This video will only cover the portion from the hold down to the palace and not much more just to keep it nice and short. But this will be available to download so that you can upload it to your Microsoft Flight Sim and follow on any GPS enabled aircraft. Before we go into the detail of this plan, uh, an actual fact whilst I remember, if you don't want to see the plan, you can use the timestamps to skip ahead. But if you don't watch the plan, some of what I say airborne will not make as much sense. So let's spend uh, three or four minutes just talking this through using some real world information. So here I have a, a representation on Google Earth, credit to military air shows for producing this. This is the airspace of flying restrictions for the Platinum Jubilee Flypast. The large area to the north and east is where most aircraft held and they waited there ready to start flowing down the route towards Buckingham Palace. There's also another route here that goes past Bury St Edmunds which I believe the F-35s would have used to meet up with the A330. So we're using a hold very close to South uh, Southwold. Now the reason it's so close is again is to make the video shorter uh, and likewise I've just gone a straight line down here from Southwold just to keep things super simple. The information of how to plot this, if you're interested, comes from this document, which you can easily Google. And these areas are what um, the coordinates are taken from. And it gives you times that um, restrictions are in place, i.e. when the aircraft will be using this airspace, and altitudes. And that is also represented at the end of the document, uh, similarly to what you see in this page. So that's what I've used to plan my route. I'll also show you from Flight Radar 24, this was on their Twitter feeds on the day of the flypass. You can see the holds that were over the sea, uh, hold here and hold here. And they all flowed, in this case, south of Southwold, nearer to Ipswich before flowing in towards the palace. And you can see all the call signs and registrations, uh, or at least the registrations of each of these aircraft that they had information for. Another nice feature that you can use uh, Flight Radar 24 is uh, for is to look at historic flights. So this is Zulu Zulu 336 call sign uh, call sign Madras 71, I believe, on the day, which was the painted A330. Now you can see here it went Bryce Norton to Bryce Norton. If I scroll it through, you can see they're held there, uh, waiting for their time to start flowing in, and then as they flowed in, they went uh, this direction south of Ipswich. And you can see if I scroll down, you can see that they're at 1,000 feet all the way in and 280 knots ish ground speed all the way down here to the target. So you can uh, surmise that the F-35s that were with them were also flying 280 knots. And whilst I fly the route in a moment, I'll talk to why um, certain aircraft are done in a certain order down this path. So that's enough background. Let's have a look at the plan itself. My plan is uh, short and sweet with a straight line. We're going to hold here. And what we're going to do is use the stopwatch instead of a physical time. So more on that in a second. So we're going to select this whole point. This is just a GPS hold point. I'm basing it loosely off the Lima Alpha Mike VOR. Let's scroll down here. Here it is, Lima Alpha Mike. It's just south of Stansted, 115.6. And I've got that dialed into the aircraft with a track of 232. Now, if you're going to follow an instrument hold, one, it's too far away really to get that accurate. Um, but it would be 233, but 232 is good enough, and that's what I've set on the HSI and the aircraft, and I'm usually using it mostly for the range, so I can see, uh, or I know that at South, uh, Southwold, which is my push point, uh, that's 68 miles away from Lima Alpha Mike, and the farthest point of my hold before I turn left will be 10 miles from my push point, and my holding point here is actually 5 miles. Why 10 and 5 are important? is because I'm flying at 300 knots ground speed for the hold, and that equates to five miles every minute. So one uh, leg outbound, straight and level, is going to be one minute, which is five miles. And then from the hold to the push point, again, at 300 knots ground speed is another minute. Most of the aircraft that flew through uh, the Jubilee Flypass for real actually flew no greater than 300 knots. The Red Arrows did 300 knots, and like I've already said, the A330 did 280. I'm going to hold uh, and transit to the push point at 300 knots, but then I'm going to accelerate to 360 knots, again, just to make things a little bit quicker. So 
The hold itself is a left hand hold, one minute legs, rate one turns at either end, and a rate one turn is uh, 360 degrees in two minutes. So 180 degrees is complete in one minute. So a minute out, a minute turn, a minute back, and another minute. So a four minute hold in total. What I'm going to demonstrate on the way out is uh, figuring out how long I've got to adjust this, these legs, uh, considering this is three minutes until I get back to my hold point, so I can match up my timing for my time over target. And I'll talk about that. In fact, let's cover it off now. So because I want a time over target, a time over Buckingham Palace of one o'clock local, and I'm using the stopwatch, what I'm going to do is hack my stopwatch at 12 minutes 40 local. So that can be wherever I am uh, flying from Norwich out to the hold. Ideally, you do it close to the hold, so you're in the hold and you can adjust as you go. Because I've hacked 20 minutes early, I then have to figure out at what point on my stopwatch I need to start this route inbound. So if uh, the leg is 3 minutes and 45 seconds from the push point, which is Southwold, it is 4 minutes, a uh, correction, 14 minutes and 45 from the uh, hold point here as I transit down. So I know if I'm hacking my clock 20 minutes before my time over Buckingham Palace, that I need to be back at this hold point traveling down the leg at 5 minutes 15 and I need to be and I need to be at the push point 360 knots at 6 minutes 15 seconds on the stopwatch and then if you add 13 minutes 45 onto 6 minutes and 15 you get your 20 minutes and because I hacked at 12:40 therefore I'll be over Buckingham Palace at 1 o'clock <laughs> I hope that was uh, clearer than mud, but um, you'll get the idea as I follow it through on the target. Essentially, I'll hack the clock. 20 minutes later, I'll be over Buckingham Palace. The next thing I'll need to do is in the hold, I'll adjust these outbound legs in order to achieve the hold point roughly on time, and then I'll finesse with speed as we go. That is how I've figured the hold. As I push, and a push point is just where you commit uh, down a, a target run, essentially, I'm going to be flying 360 knots ground speed. Now I'll talk about true airspeed, ground speed uh, as we go. Uh, and the rest of the fixes I have is just a timing reference and I'll adjust my speed to compensate as we go down there. Uh, turn at Hainault and then down in towards the palace. So that is my plan, big picture. Hopefully that'll give you enough information. Let's jump back into the cockpit and get flying to our destination. Okay, so here we are with the stopwatch running. I'm approaching my hold area based on A. I can see my course bar is set up and I've got 72 miles. The hold point is 73 miles away, so I'm not far off. I can see the hold point on my GPS. And visually, I can see a small lake on the coast, and that's kind of the visual reference for my hold. So lots of different ways of finding the hold. My push point, you can see over to the right there, 3.30, 4 o'clock, is the lake, northern tip of the lake. The weather today is about 5 knots from the east, so not really much of a factor. But in order to fly ground speed of 300 knots, I'm actually flying an indicated airspeed of 280. If you're interested in knowing how to calculate that and why that is, then stick around and I'll talk about that once we start our route. So we've gone through the centre line of the holding point, we've gone past the fix, I'm going to start turning left uh, outbound to see what time I have to lose or gain in the hold. Rate 1 turns at this speed are approximately, I think, 35 degrees angular bank. But this is very much a case of that looks about right. OK, we've rolled out of our turn at 1 minute and 30 seconds. If it takes me 3 minutes to do the rest of this hold, that'll be uh, 4 minutes and 30 seconds, which puts me 45 seconds early. So what I need to do is add on... Hmm, well, we rolled out... Uh, after the uh, hold point so we'll account we'll let that account for about uh, 20 seconds so we need another 20 seconds so what i'll do outbound is uh, add on 10 seconds which means that on the way back i'm increasing the distance traveled by 10 seconds and that'll give me the 40 second delay that i'm hoping to achieve he says i rolled out at one minute 30 so at two minutes and 40 i'm going to turn back and see how close to five minutes and 15 over the hold point i can get Uh, if you're new to the Hawk, of course, if you want to set 1156, then you set it down on this box here. VOR 1156, set ILS counterintuitively, set ILS on this toggle here, and then it'll work for the VOR. Okay, doke, we have five seconds to go. 
need to fly a bit more accurately. There we go. Now we'll take a right one turn to the left. And when we roll out, we can see what our distance is. And if we know we're traveling at five miles a minute, we can figure out what time we're going to get back to our holding point. I'm not planning fuel today, but there is plenty of fuel on board for the route itself. And we've got uh, just less than, well, 1,150 kilos. Once we start our route again, once I've discussed the uh, next considerations, I'll show you the livery that we're sporting today. And it is kind of an exclusive. It's about to be released on FlightSim.to by Yulin Liveries. Uh, and it is very, very nice indeed. So I'll show you that in just a moment. OK, so we know our hold is at 72 miles. We're rolling out 81 miles, kind of 80 miles back inbound. So I can see left of the nose is that little lake. So I'm going to aim for that lake, try and stay at 5,000 feet. And when I get to 77 miles on the DME, it says 79 now, but when I get to 77 miles, I know I've got a minute left until I get to my hold point. And hopefully that will coincide with me being a minute early on the stopwatch. Lots of math goes into this, that is for sure. OK, 77, that's one minute. I'm going to be slightly late, so I'm going to up my speed to 300 knots indicated. And now, rather than fly to the whole point, I'm just going to look ahead to my uh, push point, which is the lakes in the distance over there. The plan at the push point is to send down to 2,000 feet and we'll fly that all the way in towards London city centre and then we'll go down to 1,000 feet. So we've got 25 seconds until we get to our hold point. Seventy-three, and we're about seven seconds early, but that's cool. I don't mind that at all. Now, we're not going to reset the clock. If you've seen plenty of my other videos, the time on target I did through uh, Wales, I'll put a link above and the description for that one. I reset the clock when I enter low level. This time, I'm not going to because I'm doing continuous timing all the way through. And I want to fly at 360 knots ground, so that's 350 knots-ish indicated once I pass this point uh, and the 12 o'clock. So this is the point at which I will assess my timing. Now there will be a little bit of a fudge because the timing goes from 300 knots here to 360 knots straight away. So actually I'm flying too fast so I'll end up a bit early but the, the purpose of this video is to work out the timing so we'll do that in shortly. Here we go, there's the time and I am eight seconds early. Cool. So let's get on our altitude of 2,000 feet, heading of 232, wind adjusted. We'll accelerate up to our 350 knots. And because we were slightly late and we're taking our time to get up to speed, that might account for some of the timing correction that we have to do. For the rest of it, I'm going to fly maybe 10 knots slower, ideally uh, five knots slow for six minutes, but because we've only got a four minute leg next, I'm going to fly 10 knots slow, so 340 knots will work out. Now, whilst I <laughs> rub my tummy and pat my head, I'll try and put the autopilot on. Yes, I know there's not an autopilot, but just so that I can talk and fly at the same time. That is now engaged. Excellent. Weather looks glorious. Speed is good. Fuel is good. Oxy is good. Engine's good. Location. We've got Norwich to the north and Watersham coming up as a diversion as we go down. Next event is four minutes. We know we're seven seconds early and we've accounted for that in terms of the speed flying at 340 knots. Four minutes timing on top of what we have at the, uh, the push point. That means that at Ipswich uh, fix, I will be at 10 minutes and 15 on the hack time. So we've got just over two or three minutes left to go. So very quickly, why I'm flying slower than what I'm telling you in terms of ground speed. Now, because uh, true airspeed 
is your ground speed as long as the wind as long as there's no wind okay that's basic stuff as you climb higher uh, in fact the indicated airspeed is actually the measurement of the dynamic pressure entering the pitot probe which you can see on the nose as you increase altitude there is less particles because the density of the air reduces and therefore if you actually stayed at the true airspeed same true airspeed your indicated airspeed would reduce vice versa if you climb up in altitude if you kept your indicated airspeed your actual true airspeed would be faster now you can go into the a level calculations for it but in uh, truth the simple way of doing it for any aircraft is you take the miles a minute that you are flying in our case we're aiming for six miles a minute and then you multiply that by your altitude in thousands of feet in this case two so two times six miles a minute gives us 12 i rounded that down to 10 just for simplicity's sake and that's why at 5,000 feet, because we're doing 5 miles a minute, 5 times 5 is 25. In fact, 5 times 5, 25. I was flying about 20 knots slow in the hold, and that's why. That is true airspeed. What are we looking at? We've got a minute and 30 until our uh, fix. And I can tell you our fix is a roundabout to the north-northwest of Ipswich. Now let's have a look at this livery whilst we've got a minute. Look at this. So this is developed by Yulin Liveries, an absolute favourite of mine. They do great stuff with the Hawk. It is based on the Viperjet kit plane that also has a jet engine. And for your information, it, that jet engine is the same as what is used, or at least the same family, of, as the T-38 supersonic trainer. Now, it's not a supersonic kit plane, uh, but back to my original point, this is based on the Viperjet. Very, very nice indeed. And whilst I was doing that, I flew fast. So let's see what our timing is at Ipswich. Now, it's loading pretty slowly, which is disappointing, but it's getting there. Uh, our fix is this roundabout here. You can see that we're on track, which is good. And we're expecting to be there at 10 minutes and 15 seconds. So there's my roundabout just there. And about now. So we're still holding 10 seconds early. So I'm going to, because I've only got a couple of minutes on my next leg, I'm going to reduce my speed down to 310 knots indicated. So that is about 40 knots slower than what I want to do. But over two minutes, that should work out. My next point is going to be at Colchester. Uh, it's going to be a small uh, bridge over a river next to a little town. And that's going to be at 12 minutes and 10 Okay, GPS, of course, is helping me, but with the lack of wind and just holding the track, it all uh, becomes a little bit simpler. Now, on the fly past they do over Buckingham Palace, when they're involving slow aircraft, they always put the slow aircraft up front, which seems a bit counterintuitive because you realise that the, all the fast stuff will be catching them up. Well, on the day, on the, uh, I think it was the 2nd of June, um, they wanted everyone to fly past, that's about 70 aircraft, to fly over Buckingham Palace within six minutes. And if you put the slow stuff at the back of the train, the separation between the front element and the rear element only gets bigger. Whereas if you set the time on target over the Buckingham Palace, specifically for each aircraft, when they arrive there, hopefully, given your planning, they will have the standard separation. And then after the palace, they would very quickly have to separate left, right and central in order to deconflict from the aircraft behind, obviously catching up the helicopters, if that makes sense. So that's why they send the slow aircraft up first. How are we doing? 12 minutes and 10. That is coming up in 30 seconds. Uh, I've got a small village off to the 12 o'clock. It's got what looks like a river, so that's a good thing. 2,000 feet keeps us legal to fly over it, I think. Let's have a look from outside. There's my bridge. And now. So we are two seconds late. So I'm going to go back up to 350 knots. Maybe 345 because the wind is ever so slightly behind us. And that has us pretty much inside our five seconds of time on target. Happy days. Now, because I've already descended down from 2,000 feet, 
the airspace, everything is above me, which I don't have to worry about so much. We've already passed Waddington, uh, Wattisham, sorry, which is behind us. And the next event, if I can just fly accurately and move a map in front of my face, we shall see. Here we go. So as we're flying down past Ipswich and Colchester, we get... Um, I can see the speed below the map. That works out nicely. You can see the LTMA. So the London Terminal Maneuvering Area is airspace, controlled airspace, here above 4,500 feet near Colchester. And that steps down to 2,500 feet near Stansted. Going a bit slow now. So we don't hit any of that airspace until we get to uh, London City Centre or London Centre, um, London City Airport, apologies. And then we're just cleared through the airspace by the uh, planning authority. Cool. So that works out. The next time is going to be uh, Chelmsford at 15.10. So we've got uh, about a minute and a half. And that is going to be a small town to the northwest of Chelmsford uh, with a T-junction and a river going up through it. What you can do as you go down the route is, um, because we're using Lima Alpha Mike the VOR for ranging, which gives us some SA, but we're not navigating by it. Once we turn around the corner, if I can flash that up quickly, we turn right over Buckingham Palace, and then we go through to Lima Oscar November 1136. So I'll dial in that VOR shortly. So we have about 45 seconds till our next fix. So I'm going to be looking ahead, trying to pick up the town. Unfortunately, load distances in this sim are pretty poor. I've tried to do some fixes. And if you know what the trick is, please put that in the comments below. Um, and whilst I think about comments, if you've got any questions about how to fly this, then feel free to ask and I'm happy to answer your questions. So here's Chelmsford, or part of it anyway. Here is a river and a road and a town. And you can see on the GPS that it's coming up there. The speed I've been fairly stable, so I'm hoping that's going to work out. We're expecting 1510 over here. So here's our road, here's the T junction. You can see that road nicely down to the side, and maybe a second late, so maybe 350 knots, 355 knots. That sounds good. So we're on track, on time, the fuel is good, the weather is good, all is well in the world except I'm going too fast now. What I'll do is when I get to my next turn point, and it is a turn point because I'm doing an ever such a slight right turn, and I'm going to follow the same track that other aircraft in the real Jubilee fly past will have followed, and that's a track of 237. Uh, and I'll fly it manually, descend down to 1,000 feet, and we'll follow the rest of the way through. Whilst I remember, I'll set my... No, 113... Six. That makes sense. You can see the green arrow has now moved over to further to the right. Nope. One. One three six. Of course, we had the nav flag displayed, so it wasn't receiving good signal. And now that I've corrected the frequency, it's working out just fine. Now this route is a lot simpler if you're using an aircraft that has a time on target function. That is to say that you can put a time in against any of your waypoints. Uh, for instance, Hainault coming up here, you can put a time next to it and it'll tell you the demanded ground speed, which makes it simple. You just make sure your speed is correct and the rest takes care of itself. In the F-18, it will tell you how long you have to go along a certain leg, but I think there's a bug with it in that it will tell you only to the turn point. If you have lots of fixes but you don't turn, I think it actually, in this case, when I tested it, it would give you how long it takes to get to Hainault. But that's not bad. That still works and gives you confidence to fly that route. So if you try it with the F-18, it works out a treat. The Hainault turn point, uh, the next track is going to be 237 degrees. We're expecting 18 minutes. That's we've got just under a minute. It's a forest corner, which is just here. And then we'll turn. You can see London uh, starting display in the distance. We'll have a quick look. Uh, in fact, it's probably better on this map. Ta -da. Here comes Hainault, and we're about to take a right turn.
So I'm hoping, although I've gone a little bit slow, that I get here at 18 minutes. You know, I even googled or followed a YouTube video to figure out how to pronounce Hainault because I've got in trouble before not pronouncing things correctly. So let's turn this right to 237-ish. Timing is... I've gone fast. Now we are five seconds early, so I'm going to fly at... I've got another minute. I'm going to fly at 330 knots and then manually the rest of the way in. There we go. Get rid of you. Autopilot's off. Disappear that. And descend down to a thousand feet. Inbound the palace, I've got a confidence fix, which will be north of the Olympic Stadium. And that'll make sure I'm definitely on track and a last confirmation of timing. Now it's five seconds. What was it? Five seconds early because I'm going slow. I'm going slow now to fix it. So hopefully I've adjusted for that a little bit by the time I get to my next fix. London seems to be popping up nice. We've got London uh, City Airport over there. We've got the O2 Arena, whatever it's called these days, over there. We've got the Olympic Stadium uh, off to the left. And my fix is going to be this bend in the road and this circular feature here. We're looking to be uh, 10 seconds past the minute, so 1910. Okay, so within three seconds. I like that. Now we're looking ahead to see. As soon as we can see Buckingham Palace, we'll line up for it. Smoke is enabled. We should be flying over bang on 20 minutes. I'm going to push the speed back up to 350 knots, and that should be us sorted for time on target. Uh, <laughs> London looks a mess, but I can see that we're pointing directly down the mile, so that is good. Speed's good. Altitude's good. Smoke is coming on. After this, it's a right turn onto west. And all that remains to do is see what time we fly over the palace. We'll call that now. A couple of seconds early. Smoke goes off. Right turn onto west. Mission complete. Now, I hope you enjoyed that video. It's certainly fun to make. And you can uh, remember you can download all the resources, both real and simulated, to follow through the same mission yourself. Thank you for watching, and I hope you'll join me for the next video.